Hello and welcome back to Dundee Road. Again today we are going to be doing another model. This time we're going to do a little one, a little simple one. Um, it took a long time to do that, that shot. So let's do something that's a bit more simple. So today I'm going to start from scratch um, and I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator to um, allow me to draw a little vector image. So uh, what we need is we need um, essentially some rectangles that make up the shape of the bus shelter. The bus shelter is going to be fairly simple. It's not going to have the, the curved roof like the, um, the one that I've seen that other people use, the blue one. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um, the height. So the width is going to be two millimeters. And the height is going to be um, 32 millimeters. So as you can see, we've now got essentially one post. wide variation of, of bus stops but I'm looking for a fairly typical one in the UK. So there we go, I've just gone online and got a fairly typical um, UK bus stop. This is roughly what we're, we're aiming for. I'm just going to make it two, two sections at the back and then have the, um, the end. And I will do an advert one, um, but not today. So you can see we've got a front post and a back post. That is what these are. And they are going to be joined together by a top bar, a middle bar, and a bottom bar. So, uh, height this time will be 2mm. We remember that our card is 1mm uh, thick, so our thickness is 1mm, and then our depth is going to be what we're working in here. So, we want it to be a little bit deeper than it is. Thick. So this is going to be around about 20 millimeters. And that one goes all the way up to the roof. So I'm using keyboard commands here, just control C, control V, basic copy and paste. And then I want a little bit of gap at the bottom. I want to leave a little bit more gap on the bottom of these so that I can sink it into the pavement just to make it look um, very like what we've got here. And then this middle, mi middle bar, um, I want to make a little bit thicker. So, tools I've got here I need to um, not maintain the, 
the um, the link between height and width, and then that allows me to be able to insert. And as you can see, I've got a tool which says this is the exact middle point between the bottom and top. So that gives me um, my side. bus stop. We do have limits of the card, it would be nice to have one mil strips and if I had plastic card available to me I would probably try and cut them into one mil strips and, and build it with one mil but it will be very very delicate. So now we've just got the back piece to do. And the back piece is essentially a longer version of the, the bits that we've just done. So I can move that further and I can make that um, so I just need to change the sizes here make that up to 60 millimeters. And the same for this one. So the black lines are the outer edges of my sizes. The actual size is the internal So when I'm cutting, I'm going to try and cut just inside the lines. Okay, so there we have our, our pack. And then just for stability, I will then put center post in just like what we've got here. So that's how it's represented and that's that's what we've what we've done. So now I'm gonna make this up for cutting because I want to make um, my cutting as strong as I can um, because obviously we're going to be taking cardboard right down to very thin so I want to try and make as few cuts as possible and what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put some extra pieces just so that if something um, uh, rips, I've got a few extra little bits. Available to me. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a scale. So this is a known measurement that I, I've just put on here. So when I print this out, I will check that the inside of this box is one centimeter by one centimeter. So I'll go and print that out and I'll be back with you in a second. So I've now got it printed. And what I've done is I have put in a square so I can check my, my measurements. So the internal uh, measurement should be one millimeter by one millimeter for my kit to work. So the first thing I'm going to do, because I want to use up some scrap card, is just break this down into 
uh, smaller sections. So I always try and use every bit of card that I have. Um, and even even little strips like this can come in handy when you've when you've got something like that which you, you need. So I try and not throw away any any bits of card, um, even when they've they've been drawn on or they've, they've already got um, parts stuck to them. And even this paper will get used for writing down measurements or something on. just to the insides of the lines as the way that the software works is it puts the um, the border around the box that you've elected to draw Because this is the only um, bit that needs to be doubled up, I'm going to glue that together just now so that it's ready um, sooner um, rather than um, anytime soon. So as you can see, this, this bit of card has now had uh, two uses as um, part of the model. And it's not gone to waste.
So we've got our back frame and we've got our two sides. And that's, that's it, that's our bus stop. So what I'm gonna do now is I am gonna glue these together and then I'll come back once they're glued. this week's comparison I am going to compare some solders. So uh, underneath my baseboard I'm planning on using um, network style connectors so that I can plug things in and uh, move things about. At the end though I'm going to need a board which breaks out the wires um, so that I can solder on things like the, the lights for uh, things like our bus stop or for um, our shops. So inside uh, a normal Cat6 cable, you've got uh, eight pairs plus a screen, um, which is essentially a, a ground wire. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use this little prototype board and I'll probably cable tie it to the edge here once everything's all soldered in and nice and neat and I'm going to use these pads at the side to give me a breakout for all of the devices um, and all of the things which are above the baseboard and above this point. So the reason I decided to use network cable is that in its standard it can carry up to 48 volts um, which is known as power over ethernet. So it's good for a good voltage. Um, it's all going to be low current, so it'll all be um, LEDs and stuff. So um, there, there's no problem with it overheating or anything. Um, I do wire it as standard, so it, the, the cables um, are replaceable easily. So if a cable was to get damaged, um, I have loads of these ends that I can, I can put onto cables, or I can just go into a shop and buy a network cable and it will work. Um, so, first of all, um, I'm going to wire it in what's known as the B standard. Um, and that um, just allows um, me, as I say, to use um, standard off the shelf network cables. Um, so, some of them I'll do with the lead free solder, some I'll do with the lead solder and some I will do with the cheap Chinese solder. So let's start off with the um, lead free solder. These are both from Rapid Electronics, they're both essentially the same product, one's got the lead and one's a lead free. So we will go for the first pad and the second pad. So this will be my um, orange and orange stripe. 
So that went on quite well um, once it um, once it hardens though it does go a bit um, frosty. Um, so now we've got a stranded wire in, in this one. in the wire. So I tend to use these in uh, pairs. So the plus and the minus of whichever signal is on the corresponding colors. But I do wire it in the same form as um, I would wire a network. So this one, uh, I think we'll go with the leaded solder. As this is a special purpose, it doesn't have to conform to the standard, but I just like to have it as the standard um, so that it's compatible with, with anything that um, I put onto it. that the leaded solder is a bit shinier.
So now we'll go to this uh, cheap Chinese solder. It came with a soldering iron. It's much thicker, uh, but we'll have, we'll have a go. So you can definitely see now that that one is definitely um, crusty and not very nice looking. So by using the eight um, conductor wire, um, I can control eight separate um, voltages or eight separate, eight separate buses of things. to our last one. There we go, we've got a nice board with all the different solders. I definitely still prefer the way that the leaded solder has flowed. The lead free stuff leaves peaks and it, it goes all, all crusty. And that's how I make a little breakout board. So that now has uh, an RJ45 connection uh, wired in the B standard and it's in the B standard at this side as well. Um, I can match up the pairs as they are um, or I can wire them separately but um, it depends on how I'm going to wire the rest of the board. I just need a, a board to um, start laying out stuff uh, like LEDs for, for buildings. Um, so that's this board um, and I got to try all my solders as well. I definitely will still order another roll of um, leaded solder from, from Rapid. You have to be a registered company to do that uh, with them. Um, but of course, I also do have the option of the lead free from them. Um, these rolls are obviously a bit more expensive than you would get on eBay, um, but they, they flow a bit better. Um, as you can see, the, the one from Rapid um, didn't peak as much as the, the one um, from uh, the, the kit, the, the free one. Um, it's not to say I won't use this solder, I will, I'll use it, I'll use everything that I've got. Um, but I do definitely think that the, the Rapid um, works a bit better. So now I've got the bus shelter together. 
it is very del delicate as I said it is just cardboard so now I'm thinking about how I'm going to um, paint it up um, these bus shelters tend to have the roofs different from the rest so I'm going to try this uh, plastic uh, project enamel which is a water based paint and I'm going to try and make the, the shelter look like it's uh, a metallic colour and then the top is going to be uh, night blue. So I'm going to give this a go, uh, see, how, see how it is. Um, I do have to be careful because of course this is cardboard and um, any moisture it's just going to suck in. Um, and it is it is now extremely thin. It should be it should be much stronger now that it's actually in its sort of final um, its final build. So it's got it's got a bit of support, but the, the front bits are quite quite weak. So we'll give this a shake. And these are these are new paints. Um, again, I'm having to find I have to find stuff locally. Um, so this is just just what I can find. So 
that's a, a non a non permanent pen I've used, so I need to be very careful when I'm cutting this off. So the first thing that I'll do. Off. So this is just um, some packaging. That happened to have a clear window on the front. So Let that dry and that will be our bus stop. Quite an easy little project to do. Um, <clears throat> time, time consuming doing the, all the cuts but if you take your time with the cutting you can get quite a fine um, looking um, cardboard bus, bus shelter. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll be seeing this bus shelter very soon up next to our shop. Thank you.